Hello and welcome! Today's video is going to focus on boosters and which kind of boosters you should choose for your playstyle. This will be mostly bipedal and reverse joint focused, but I will make some comments on tanks and tetrapods with certain boosters if I can. The tests will be done with the same AC, but the details given in the voiceover will be build specific. I suggest you test them out yourself and get a feel for the boosters in your own build. And later on in the video, I'll be touching back on the subject of the tier list, so stay tuned for that. But without further ado, let's see what you can learn about boosters today. In the AC assembly screen, if we move over to the boosters, we can expand the display to get more specific details for the boosters. Now, some people might not know this, but if you open the help menu and select contextual help, this allows you to go over every single stat of the booster and get a detailed explanation of what it means. I'll be showcasing all 12 boosters and giving some insight as to what type of builds that best fit in, accumulating their details to reach a conclusion. First up we have the Alula boosters. These boosters are usually used for lightweight builds, as they excel in speed and quick boosting, having extremely short quick boost recharge for sharp movement, along with a very good melee thrust to put forward the narrative of aggression. Up next, it's the Kikaku boosters. This pair of boosters has the absolute highest melee thrust, but ends up falling short in other aspects, as there is almost exclusively a melee focused booster, intended for melee aggression rather than being an all-rounder. Next, it's the BST-G2-P04 boosters. These boosters are relatively alright all around, having decent enough speed, great quick boost efficiency, and ok melee thrust. These boosters would be ideal for a medium to heavier build. Moving on, we have the G1-P10 boosters. Not much to say about these aside from the fact that they leave much to be desired. Their gimmick is that they are extremely light, but lose out on every other stat otherwise, intended for way to manage lightweight builds. Next in the list, it's the G2 slash P06 speed boosters. As the name suggests, these boosters were intended for their impressive boost speed. Whilst falling behind in other stats, these thrusters are perfect for light to medium builds who wish for strong enough boost to get around easier. Now we have the Flugel boosters. These boosters are specialized in being all-rounders, generally focusing on decent enough speed, while trying to maintain a good balance for all the stats. These boosters are ideal for medium builds. Next it is the Buerzel boosters. Unlike other boosters, this pair is not particularly focused on speed or quick boosting. Rather, they are focused on assault boosting, having the fastest one in the entire game. Extremely good for heavyweight builds. And now, the what I would call 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 boosters. This pair was made with heavy builds in mind, having a really long quick boost to allow any build in the game to get around. Whilst boasting this is decent assault boost efficiency, these boosters are obviously in favor of heavier builds. Next, we have the Mule Boosters. These boosters were made for heavier builds, as they don't really have the greatest speed, nor the fastest quick boosting. Their selling point, however, is that they have unmatched vertical boost efficiency, making them ideal for floating heavy builds. Next, it's the Grid Walkers. These boosters are relatively light, though they don't necessarily specialize on speed, nor quick boosting. Their gimmick is their superb vertical flight speed, being able to go up and down at ludicrous speeds. These are ideal for lightweight floating builds. Coming up next are the gills. This pair of boosters has a relatively high boosting speed, but their real strength is quick boosting, having the fastest quick boost recharge rate in the entire game. These boosters can be great in lightweight builds, if speed is what you care about the most. And finally, we have the NGI001. These boosters are generally good all-rounders, with a slight emphasis on quick boosting, while also having surprisingly high melee thrust. These are optimal for medium to heavy weight builds. Hello again. So, 
I've gotten quite a lot of flack for my tier list that I made a few days ago, and I can understand why. So, I decided I might as well address them in this video. It is not secret that I have a crippling lightweight addiction, but I should have specified that in my tier list video, as that fact was never really clear to anyone. As for the weapons, yes, it is factual that the plasma thrower is absolutely S tier on quads and tank legs, but again, I never specified that I have a bipedal bias, so I will take the blame for that discrepancy, as it was rated for bipeds. As for the stun baton and the chainsaw, these weapons are far too difficult to execute and barely work with them from soft spear to peer matchmaking. While their potential is S tier, they are downright unusable in reality. So, those are all the notes I have. These were things that I thought about post-uploading, as I was too focused on getting the video out considering it looked like this, about 11 hours worth of editing. I don't plan on doubling down on being inherently wrong, so I thought addressing these was rather important. Well, with that said, thank you for watching! I hope you could learn something new today. If you wish for more content, you can drop by my Twitch, where I stream every day, starting at 7 or 8 pm GMT plus 3, doing PvP and fight clubs where you get to fight me. And with that, have a wonderful rest of your day.